Welcome to the WREL Daily Download. I'm Amanda Lamb. In today's deep dive conversation with Colin Browder, we're going to talk about our continuing coverage into the power grid sabotage in Moore County. Welcome to the program, Colin. Thanks for being here. Good to be with you. So I'm going to point out, first of all, that we are recording this on Wednesday night. So if there's any new developments, we will include links in the show notes. But first, I think we need to just do a brief recap of what happened. How did this start on Saturday? So Saturday night, uh, someone uh, got to two uh, electric power stations in Moore County uh, and from all evidence, uh, shot them up. Likely a high-powered rifle, something like that. Uh, We've talked to experts who said it could be a deer hunting rifle, something like that. Joe Fisher uh, uh, talked to a a neighbor today who heard about 20 gunshots uh, next to one of the power stations. They they both went down within an hour of each other. Close to 40,000 customers, homes and businesses lost power. And uh, fortunately, things are improving as of now. And I know as things are improving, they still have concerns about security and also trying to figure out who did this and why. I know one of the things that we've been reporting in the last few hours is the fact that there was this threat of terrorism that the federal government put out. Um, They shared this prior to what happened. Talk about what that what that involved. It was a Homeland Security bulletin that came out on November 30th. Fairly general, talking about a a heightened threat environment nationwide, uh, generally related to anti-government, anti-LGBTQ sentiment. uh, And they said potential targets could be public gatherings, government facilities, critical infrastructure, which is obviously what we're talking here. Now, clearly, we don't know the motive yet. We don't have uh, named suspects or anything like that. We, we know, I spoke with Chris Wecker, um, former special agent with the SB, uh, FBI yesterday. He talked about what they're looking for. They're looking for any and all surveillance video that may be from either a neighbor or possibly from the power stations. Obviously, talking to any and all witnesses. They're tracking potential groups that might have issues uh, in Moore County. Um, They're looking at tire tracks, uh, any shell casings, bullet fragments, all those things will will help build the case. And obviously, if anybody saw something, heard something, knows something, uh, you know, they want them to come forward. They're, They're asking for any tips. There's a tip line. The FBI is asking for anyone who might have some video that could be helpful or any information. So they're clearly trying to scour the landscape for everything. And there's a reward and that they're hoping that that will be an incentive for people. Right. A total of uh, $75,000 right now, 25 from the state, 25 from the county and Duke Energy's ponied up uh, another 25. So they're hoping that will get someone to come forward if they have valuable information. And I know, you, you know, going back to that Homeland Security uh, warning about potential threats. Part of that had to do with the fact that there was the shooting at the nightclub in Colorado Springs in November, and that there was a belief that the gay community could be targeted again in other parts of the country. So we can't ignore the fact that there's been a lot of talk about this drag show that was taking place the night that the power went out. The show was about 40 minutes in when the power went out. They ended up calling the show, but there were protesters outside Is that still something they are looking at as a potential motive? I think absolutely everything remains on the table. Uh, I mean, the sheriff has said they, you know, early on in the investigation, he said they they didn't have anything concrete to tie it. But he said, and, and I know FBI investigators are asking all those questions to see if that possibly could be. Uh, related. So I, I think that's clearly on the table. And just in terms of looking through the data and, and these reports over the years, I mean, we had this recent bulletin, but uh, I mean, there have been warning signs for years back in 2013 at the Metcalf a substation in San Jose, California, shot up 17 transformers. Interestingly, though, in that case, and it, it got international attention because of the the terrorist act, no one was caught, by the way, never shut down power because in California, in that area, which is fairly um, metropolitan, they're able to reroute power. In Moore County, a more rural area, this happens on a more limited scale, but it just shuts down power to the entire county because they're not able to reroute. And they had to really replace 
these transformers. They couldn't just fix them. Right, exactly. And they've had to truck in all types of replacements. But they've looked at chatter over the years. In fact, uh, Homeland Security came across some chatter in 2020. Literally, a hate group put out a handbook how to do this, how to shoot up transformers and knock out power if, if you want to cause trouble. So there's a lot of fallout from this. I mean, obviously, people were without power, which was an inconvenience, but it was also dangerous because of the cold. Uh, businesses obviously could not open and schools could not open. And we've also been reporting about one death that may have been linked. And so that kind of goes to, you know, the bigger impact of this. It didn't just it wasn't just an inconvenience. It really affected people's lives. Right. And in the news conference just this afternoon, um they told us, look, this really is going to be determined by the medical examiner. We don't know if it was uh, related to uh, the power outage or not. I think it was an 87-year-old person who, who, who passed but didn't have power. So we, we don't know all the circumstances. It's significant, it's significant because of a law, the federal law. If, if there is a death related to destruction of a, an electric power facility, uh, the person found responsible could get life in prison. Wow! So they could be they could be charged with Correct. with with causing this death. Well, we'll be back after the break with more from Cullen on what this situation says about the overall security of our power grid and just how vulnerable we are. Welcome back to the WREL Daily Download. I'm talking with Cullen Browder about the vulnerability of our power grid. So the situation has created a lot of concern about safety here in North Carolina and across the country. I know you've been talking to some experts. What have you found out about what this says about the potential for something like this this to happen in North Carolina or somewhere else? Well, I think we've all driven by a power station. You know, you see the fences keep out high voltage and you just never really think about uh, the impact. But each and every one... Uh, distributes power. And um, if someone's able to shoot up transformers and knock out power, depending on how it can be rerouted, it can have an incredible impact uh, on a, a community. So we've talked to experts who, after the Metcalf um, attack back in 2013, the industry really looked hard at some of the physical security. And there were recommendations, either build walls, put sandbags up, just block the view, even that, which is a less expensive way to sort of harden these substations, you know, slats and fence, what, whatever, just to block the view so you can't just randomly start, start firing. Uh, those kinds of recommendations and guidelines were put out there. Clearly, that has not reached every single substation across the country. I and mean, you're talking about 55,000 substations. I, I think the industry has been focused on cybersecurity because of the threats uh, and maybe got away from some of the physical security because this is obviously less sophisticated. But, uh, I mean, we're seeing the impact. And and so are there plans to heighten security? I mean, is that what you're hearing? I know Duke doesn't want to get too specific because they don't want to tell people how to get into these substations. I think absolutely that's going to happen. I mean, we we've, we've heard – there's been in indications from the White House. Governor Cooper made it a big I issue this week just talking about we've got to uh, figure out a way to prevent this kind of thing from happening. All these industry experts are saying, OK, we should have been doing this. Now we've definitely got to do it because this this just exposes the vulnerability of our, our power grid. And, you know, I've heard some talk, too, as well. You know, you're saying, well, it happened in a rural area, Moore County. And if somebody wanted to try this out, Moore County might be a good place to do it. And then who knows what's next? Another another county, a bigger county, another state, a metropolitan area. So it, it does seem like a crisis that doesn't just affect us or our area. This is a nationwide issue. It's getting international attention because this could happen just about anywhere and just the, the information getting out there, like I said, that 2020 chatter, literally a handbook that was put out, I think it was a 14-page document from a hate group, here's how you do it. And, and you know that kind of thing is, is circulating right now, and, and we've got to figure out a way to, to better monitor and, and prevent it from happening. Absolutely. And the good news is that it sounds like 
the power is mostly restored as of this recording. Yes. But, you know, the second tier here is finding out who did this and why. And I would imagine there's a lot of pressure on these investigators, local, state, and federal, to do that, to find somebody so they can at least give answers to this community that was so devastated by this situation. Just this afternoon, the, the sheriff came out and just made a few brief comments. He, I mean, he looked exhausted because I'm sure he's, you know, working around the clock trying to look for leads, follow up on tips they might be getting because they, they absolutely feel the pressure. And, and so many things are at stake here. The, the real question is, is this a true case of domestic terrorism, whether it's you know, is it politically motivated, trying to intimidate, related to, you know, something that's going on? Is it a, a coordinated conspiracy amongst a, a group? All those things matter, but they've they've got to find, you know, the person or persons who, who did this. And, and I think in the federal statutes, which there are some state statutes, but I think this is clearly going to turn into a federal case if and when they catch someone. And it sounds like from everything I've heard that they do believe this is someone that had some knowledge of an electrical substation, whether they worked in the industry or something related to the industry. This wasn't random. Right. It, it would be hard even if you had a gun, you know, to know where to shoot, um, exactly how to take out uh, the transformer. But like I said, you know, stuff circulating back channels of the Internet – the how-to on on how to do this kind of thing. So there is some level of sophistication, but at the same time, a lot of these groups are passing around information to, to help others do it. Well, I know you and others in our newsroom will continue to follow this. Thank you so much for Thanks your time for having me. and your insight, Colin. And thank you for listening to the WREL Daily Download and making us part of your morning routine. Another great way to get WREL news is in the Morning Briefing newsletter. It's a daily email that's waiting in your inbox every morning with triangle news, events, and headlines to get you ready for the day. Sign up at WREL.com backslash newsletter.